addition to the primitive or built-in data types in Java, the language also lets you define your own data types. These are called classes. Let's describe how to define a new class. I start by clicking on the new class button in Blue J and then give the class a name. The name should start with a capital letter, not contain any special characters or spaces. Let's create a class called Dog. You can see that BlueJ provides a lot of boilerplate for each new class you define. Let's start from scratch by deleting this boilerplate. Now we have the skeleton for a dog class. In fact, this class would compile just as is. You can see that there are no compiler errors. Now let's declare some variables that we're going to use to contain information about the dog. Let's contain three pieces of information. The name of the dog, how much the dog weighs, and the age of the dog. It's going to be an important object-oriented principle that whenever we have dog objects, or any objects for that matter, we do not give direct access to our internal data. If some other object outside of our class wants access to this data, they have to go through what is known as an accessor method. We're going to describe some accessor methods for dog right now, starting with accessor methods for the name. If the outside user wants to change the name of the dog, they would call the following setName method. Let's have a quick look at the method we just created. The public keyword means that anyone can call this method. The void return type means that this particular method does not return an answer to the caller. Here is the name of the method called setName. You should try to create method names that give a good description of what the method does. Inside the parentheses, we have parameters, in this case just one, which is going to be the new name we want to set for the dog. Inside the method are the list of instructions that e execute whenever this method is called. In our case, what we're going to do is going to take this string name parameter and use it to update the permanent name of the dog. Furthermore, we're going to create another method now that's going to allow the user to query the name of our dog. Here is the method called getName that does this. Once again, we've used the public keyword to show that anyone can call this method. But notice that this time this method has a return type of string. That means whenever the user calls this method, the method returns the answer in the form of a string. This is of course going to be the name of the dog. This particular method has no parameters. As you can see, there is no information inside the parentheses. After the curly bracket comes the body of the method. Here it's a single line that just returns the name to the caller. We're going to go ahead now and create getter and setter methods for the other two variables that we have in our dog class. now finished building all the getter and the setter methods. The setter methods are often known as mutator methods because they mutate or change the internal data of the structure. The getter methods, on the other hand, return information to the user but do not change the data of the dog. Let's create a little tester class now and try out our new dog class. created the skeleton for a dog tester class and inside we've used the magic words public static void main to define the starting point for every Java program. Inside here this line of code creates a new dog object. This particular dog has the variable name D. 
Let's give the dog a name now by using the set name method. My dog's name happens to be Luna, so I'm going to set this dog's name to Luna. Later on, I can query the dog, ask it what its name, and print it. Here I'm setting the name of the dog, and here I'm retrieving the name of the dog and printing it. Let's try this out and see how well it works. You can see that we have successfully retrieved the name of the dog Luna. Let's now go back to our tester code and create two different dogs. We've already got one here named Luna. Let's create another one called Tuna. Let's try out our enhanced main program. We can see that both Luna and Tuna are present here now which indicates that each dog stores its own name and they do not overlap with one another.